Welcome back, everybody. Well, our next guest is a best-selling cookbook author who got her start in the biz when one legendary Jamie Oliver took a chance on her. And ever since she's hit the scene, she is on a mission for everybody to cook sustainably, sharing creative one pot and pan vegetarian recipes. It's all in her brand new book, One, which is the best title ever, all the way from the UK. Anna Jones joins The Social. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thrilled to be here. Anna, we are thrilled to have you with us. So you started writing this book a few years ago, but ended up adapting some of the recipes during the pandemic. So how did the pandemic sort of reshape the way that you see cooking? Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I started the recipe book nearly three years ago now. And um, in the last year or so, you know, in the UK, we found ourselves in a, in, a, in a situation where we couldn't get eggs, we couldn't get flour. I'm not sure if that was the same for you guys, but I never yep. imagined in my lifetime I wouldn't be able to get hold of a bag of flour or something that simple. So I think over the last year, um, We've, we've learned how to cook in a different way. I think we've cooked a lot at home, but I think we've also become more confident to kind of swap in and out um, different ingredients and maybe, you know, replace, I don't know, a sweet potato with some with some squash or something like that. So I try to be more flexible with the recipes. Okay, so you are all about being um, greener for ourselves and also for the environment, which we of course love. And I think that people generally know that eating less meat, also um, cutting down on food waste, we know that this is good for the planet, but you say that another place to look when thinking about sustainability is energy. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Well, it wasn't something I considered really too much in my kitchen before I started researching this book. Um, but in the UK, about a third of our household energy goes in the kitchen, and 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 that's roughly the same in Canada. Um, and it, it, that's actually a big piece of the pie. That's quite a lot of money. Um, so you know, if we can save a bit of our energy in the kitchen, we're helping the environment, mm. we're also helping save a bit of money. And, and it's actually really simple ways we can do that. You know, that's why I focused on kind of one pan, one tray cooking. So we're only using one hob, one oven, one heat source. So we're not turning five or six different things on. Also really basic things like keeping a lid on your pan when you're cooking, you know, saves about a third of the energy. Um, and, and, and just simple things like not overstuffing your freezer, they seem really basic they seem a bit boring but actually they can really help i mean i definitely am a, bit, a big fan of the one pot one pan meals um mostly just because i'm lazy and i don't want to cook i don't want to clean up like a million dishes <laughs> but i never thought of it in this idea you know relating it to energy so i love this so you made us one uh, a one pot meal to try it is your aubergine or eggplant as we call it here uh, and peanut stew with pink onions um we're gonna try it out right now it looks delicious it smells amazing uh, tell us about the dish and how oh. you made it yeah, I'm so excited for you guys to try it. I've got some here. So um, I started off by charring some aubergines or eggplant in a dry pan. And that means they pick up a bit of color, um, a bit of smokiness. Um, and then you fry those off with some onions, lots of spices. So chili, coriander seeds, smoked paprika that gives that lovely rounded smoky flavor. Um, then add mm. some tomatoes, some stock, some mm. peanuts, whole peanuts and peanut butter. And it's kind of a really warming great stew you get the protein there from the peanuts and the peanut butter oh my and god this is amazing good. i've never oh. eaten anything like this before it's rare to try a flavor combination that's very unique and it really is i love it oh i'm so glad you like it yeah it is quite unique it's sort of loosely based in kind of north african cooking it's that peanut and aubergine i think is actually a really 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 great combination so i want to go back to jamie oliver for a second because before you know he entered your life I know you were working in economics, um, you know, you had a degree in PR as well, or is it the other way around? Degree in economics, working in PR. Um, he comes exactly. into your life and, you know, gives you this big break in so many ways. We've been really lucky because he's been a, a regular friend and guest on our show here. And he seems so lovely to us. But as a mentor on the other side, what have you learned from him? What's that been like working with him? Well, he's he he's a, a, a brilliant, brilliant man, and I'm I'm his biggest fan. Um, but he, I think what I really learned from him is how food can be used actually as a powerful source for connection, 
for joy, for you know that lovely family um, time, but also how how food is is our real kind of common thread, and actually how it can be so powerfully used for change. Um, also, he's just great fun. He's great fun to be around. <laughs> Super encouraging, <laughs> and he has a crazy, crazy work ethic, as I'm sure you guys have picked up on. I think a bit of that's rubbed mm -hmm. on me too. Totally. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about food sustainability because we think of food waste as the food that we uh, they throw out, but you say it's so much more than that. So how have you reframed the way that we look at food waste? So I think quite often we do look at food waste as the kind of, um, you know, stuff we throw away, the stuff that, you know, perhaps goes bad in our fridge. But there's lots of other ways we can, you know, think about food, perhaps the scraps that we, you know, when we unwrap our, un, you know, peel our onions, our celery, our carrots, you know, those peelings are actually, they've got brilliant flavour, you know, they can easily be put into a stock, you don't need good looking, you know, vegetables to make a stock. So it's just thinking about every <laughs> little bit, you know, the the stalks from your herbs when you chop them up those are great in the base of a curry or the base of a stew like this so you know it's just it's just thinking about every piece of the puzzle and also thinking about the really basic foods we throw away actually it's you know it's bread it's milk it's cheese it's not kind of always the fancy beetroot tops or carrot tops we need to worry about it's those basics we buy every day that we need to make sure we're buying the right amount of and using up Oh, I love that. Let's go with that because I know that you say like, you know, it's like you said, it's not just about using the whole food, but it is also about things like what do you do with spoiled milk, for example? Absolutely. Well, everyone thinks that spoiled milk is is no good anymore. Um, but but it can actually, you know, as long as it's not really, really bad, it can still be used. You know, if you think of kefir, mm. that fermented milk drink, that is essentially spoiled milk. Um, but but spoiled milk is, is actually great in baking in places you might use buttermilk, for instance. So the spoiled milk has got that acidity in in, in scones, that very traditional British, um, you know, dish that you have an afternoon tea that's actually better to make those with slightly spoiled milk. So, you know, th there's these ingredients which actually once they age a little bit, they become completely different and they're still useful. And at first you showed a one pot meal and now we're going to move over to a one pan meal. And this is a halloumi broccoli and chickpea bake. Mm. I love halloumi, but I have to admit, like, I don't, I've never cooked with it and I'm not sure why. So I'm curious to know how this whole recipe comes together. Oh, it's super, super easy to cook with halloumi. I've actually got it here. I don't know if you guys can see. It all comes together in one tray. So the first thing you do is put some chickpeas, um, garbanzo beans um, in a tray with some oil, some spices. So I use cumin seeds, some cinnamon, a bit of chili powder, um, and the zest of an orange. Those cook for 10 minutes, so they actually go crispy around the edges. Then I pulled that out of the oven, turned the oven on to broil, and popped in some broccoli and um, the halves of the orange, which I kind of squeezed over for a bit more flavor. And then I don't oh. know if you can see the halloumi in the middle. I kind of... Yeah. Um, crisscrossed it on the top that helps the halloumi kind of cook all the way through that then goes under the broiler for sort of 10 15 minutes and um, when it comes out i drizzle a little bit of honey on the top and then um, a mm. few parsley leaves and a few pomegranate seeds so yeah it's definitely oh. got some kind of middle eastern flavors um, but this is ready in like 20 25 minutes so it's kind of a lot of flavor for not too much time that's really really neat well these are fabulous I know that lunch is served over here, uh, and uh, <laughs> this has just been a, a, a fabulous way to look at our food in a little bit of a different way. So thank you so much for joining us, Anna. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed chatting to you guys. Okay, and everybody's watching going, what is this? How do we get this recipe and others? Don't you worry, we've got you covered. Go to our social media channels and try this out for yourself. Anna's book is called One. Check that out as well. We'll be back after this.